Welcome back to the Morning Blend. A lot of people are very worried about the growing number of young people using heroin and other drugs. In fact, it is now widely considered a national crisis. And that's why the Stairway to Heroin educational series began a few years ago in Econmawak. This drug prevention program is now used in communities and school districts all across Wisconsin and even Illinois as a model for education, prevention, and recovery. Katie Westerman is the education coordinator for Stairway to Heroin, and Scott Bacham is a high school counselor an AODA program coordinator. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I feel like we, we are having this conversation more and more with people who come on the show, with um, nationally, it's becoming a, you know, a talked about crisis. This is something that you guys are working for a lot about ending heroin abuse, but it also stems into prescription drugs, opioids, everything. Talk a little bit about how the program began and the history of, of where you've come to. So uh, the history of the program has really started in 2014 uh, in Oconomowoc. We had suffered a series of overdose deaths, unfortunately, of former high school students. And we came together as a team and said, we need to, to address this. Mm -hmm. um, and so, in fact, last summer, unfortunately, we had lost uh, a 15-year-old high school student to the epidemic. So we started to decide uh, as a group, we need to address this. Uh, no one is immune uh, from this issue. It can, it can touch anyone and any family. Mm -hmm. uh, we know in America that every 19 minutes someone dies from a drug overdose uh, and typically uh, those are from op opioids and we know that most heroin users, 80% actually, start with prescription pills. So we know that we need to uh, educate and, and build our program around prevention. Well, let's talk about opioids because it seems like the, so much of the focus now is on that, that, that class of drugs mm -hmm. specifically and, and that and, and heroin, which sounds like you're saying there's often a progression of using the prescription drugs and then progressing to, to heroin. How is it happening? So are kids getting, are they getting a prescription because they've had a surgery or something? Are they using their parents' pills? Many of them will get those prescriptions uh, from injury or surgeries. Unfortunately, um, many kids have access to pills uh, at home and medicine cabinets. That's why we talk a lot about locking up medications. Um, and unfortunately, kids ultimately can't always ha get access to pills. Uh, the cost becomes an issue, and then ultimately uh, they turn to heroin because it's so much cheaper. And they can get it on pretty much anywhere, on the street. Very accessible right. and very cheap. Uh, and the other concern is they are not always sure what they're getting. Sometimes it's cut with other drugs like fentanyl. And so the stakes are so much greater uh, that unfortunately uh, one time is all it takes uh, for a student or, or someone to overdose. It's scary. You guys do these auditorium um, presentations and you really try and make a huge impact in people. Talk about what this wake up call um, educational series is and exactly what you do with it. So the wake up call is really, uh, it's a bedroom and mm -hmm. it's an interactive exhibit. And what we want to do is we want to um, show the, some, some of the red flags that parents and um, you know, anybody, community members, law enforcement, anybody in the community needs to be aware of that could indicate signs of drug or alcohol use or um, it's something that, you know, we want to get there early on and um, make people aware of these things. So with the the wake up call, we actually have a permanent exhibit in Heartland, Wisconsin. Um, we have it in the fire department survive a live house. So we have uh, public hours every first Wednesday and third Wednesday of the month, but we also have a mobile unit. So we are able to take it to communities and to school districts. But really what I want to say is that we want to, what we're trying to do through all of our stairway to heroin educational programs is we really want to empower parents mm -hmm. to um, start you know talking to their kids kids early on because really prevention begins with us as parents and we're the first line of defense in this fight so we really want to empower parents and that's infused through all of our programs and make them aware and m understand where they can go for resources and support and guidance and that's one of the things that we're doing through um, these programs is that we're having a large impact on our 
communities. And uh, one of the things that we've done through the past three years is that we've been able to um, impact about 14,000 people through our programs. And, and you, some people have been assessed and right, have been referred right, places or right. have actually gone in for treatment. Just this past year, we had 48 adults and adolescents go in for treatment. Wow. Right. You know, I think a lot of people will say, okay, there's this bedroom, there's these red flags. Can you give us just one example of what a red flag might be for parents who are listening today and think, do I need to be looking for something? Yeah, it could be anything from a monster drink sitting in a bedroom. Uh, kids can get bottles of water now that have uh, places where they can uh, hide pills. Hmm. So it can be something as simple as that. And a lot of parents may not think that those are actual signs. Mm -hmm. uh, but kids are very sophisticated and are mm -hmm. very much ahead of their parents. And so the bedroom allows parents to really take a look at something as simple as a water bottle or a chapstick container and think, I might want to take a closer look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had law enforcement come through, school professionals, uh, real eye-opening experiences to say, wow, I never thought that that could be something that could be used as a drug container. And we're constantly um, adding to that bedroom. When we first began, it was probably 20 to 30 red flags and it has really evolved um, because we're like Scott said we have law enforcement that we're working with we have school officials who come and say this is what we found and and it, it is a bedroom but really it could be a backpack it could be yeah. a classroom it could be a purse it, it could be anything teaching you what to look mm -hmm. for you guys have these wake up call public tours they're the first and third Wednesday of each month you can register at your choice dash live dot org to learn more thanks so much you guys Thanks Thank for, you. Having, Thanks for having us. Thank Appreciate you. it.